In our previous segment about meter, we talked about the two different types. We had duple meter, patterns in groups of two. We had triple meter, patterns in groups of three. But there's something else that we can do with meter that gives us some more options. We already talked about adding two and three together to make five or more numbers to make seven, but we can also do something within the beat itself. So we have two different things that we can do to a metric pattern to give us a little more variety in our compositional choices. So the first that we'll talk about is what we call simple meter. Doesn't mean it's easy, just it's simpler than the other one. So in a simple meter, what you have is a beat, and the beat is going to be divided in half. So if this is our beat, T, 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 T. You can see that I divided each beat in half, and sometimes I use the whole beat, because as we know, our rhythms are longs and shorts. We don't want to have the same thing over and over. I could even further divide my two beat, halves of beats, into more halves. Tiri, 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 T, T, ta, ta, tiri, tiri, ta. So you can see that the beats are very basically divided. So let's listen to an example from Mozart where we have that kind of structure. So here's our beat. Here's our melody. Now, from that, you don't really get much sense about how the beats are divided at all because the melody doesn't have um, much subdivision within it. There are a lot of long notes. But let's add the other part, and you'll see how he really makes it clear that these are simple beats. So we have one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It really makes it clear that this is how this beat is divided. Two pieces in, in little halves. So that's one thing that we can do with a meter. The other thing that we can do is divide the beat into three parts. So we call that compound meter. Each beat could be divided into three parts. And there is sort of a limitation to how many different things you can do with that. So if you sort of learn the patterns that work with that particular metric complex, then you'll recognize when you hear it. It has kind of a bouncy quality to it, especially if at fast tempos. So let's take uh, this tune. I messed up the melody, but that but to get the rhythm, it's a dum da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum. It has a feeling of three because each beat is divided into three parts. Can't really tell sometimes because not every beat subdivision is heard. But let me just put a below it so you can get this feel for that. And I have to go slower to make it work. Even on the long notes there, you can hear the subdivisions of that beat. So that's an example that's in compound meter. It's in duple because there's two beats to the measure, da da dum bum 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 bum. But each beat is divided into three parts. So we would call that compound duple meter. You could have compound triple meter. You could have simple triple, simple duple. So you have all these different combinations, which really sort of broadens our scope for that. So let's listen to a little bit of a piece here that is in compound duple meter. If you get a sort of a feeling that you're um, off on an Irish jig or something, that's a pretty good clue that it might be a compound meter. Obviously, at slower tempos, that's going to be harder to feel. So one of the tricks about meter is that it can be uh, deceptive. 
So suppose we had a piece that was in compound duple meter, but it's slow. So instead of da 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 da, we'll, we'll take a dirge version of Johnny Comes Marching Home. So you might hear that as one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, instead of hearing that as one, two, one, two. The tempo could be really slow and it would be compound duple. At a fast tempo, it's going to sound like triple. So if you're listening to music and you think it sounds like it might be in triple meter, Think about the overall mood of the piece. If it's a livelier piece and you're counting one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, probably it's not. That's probably a compound meter because thinking from your conducting experience, you know, your arm would be falling off. So think about the general mood of the piece. Is it something that sounds like the beat might be slower just because of the style of the piece? Or does it sound like it should be lively? Like, there are lots of marches in compound meter. Those are clipping right along, and you're probably not going to count those as one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So pay attention to the overall piece. Don't get so focused on the beat that you forget to think about what the real intent of the piece is, because a composer, composer is not likely to give you um, something that, that's not logical in your head. Now, some might be trying to mess with your heads, but normally they're trying to set a mood, and if they don't do it the, the right way, then you'll come out with some other feeling. So think about the big beat, whether it should be slower or faster, and then decide whether it's simple or compound based on that.